Hello and welcome to another episode of Laying Down the Law of the Old World, a law podcast in which we aim to separate our ghouls from our goblins, our snotlings from our skaven storm fiends, and our bloodthirsters from our bloodletters, and generally ask, what's up with this Warhammer stuff, warm hamster stuff? Get away from my script, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Ben Crone Barber, and I know pretty much fuck all about Warhammer. With me is my co-host, Christopher Crowell and Allen. What's up with this warm hamster stuff? Who knows absolutely fuck all about warm hamster. That was very, very warm. <laughs> and my dear brother, Darren. I say, is that a hamster? Who knows so much about warm hamster, it's a wonder he has time to do anything else. After gathering online to slay some vermin in the name of Sigma, this dichotomy between our levels of understanding became clear, and this series is an attempt to address that ignorance. Bully! Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> bully, you having a bully day? <laughs> I say Ben appears to be having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just because I have an unsucked Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> you, you, ben, you, you put on the Scottish accent, don't you, really? Yeah. You're, this is There's, your real voice. This is yeah, all our real voice. There's nothing, there is nothing that's not absolutely hilarious about the way that they spoke in the 1920s. Is that the 1920s, would you say? Yeah, 20s w- to 50s. Yeah. 20s I, don't, to 50s. I don't think it's fair to say that everyone spoke like that. Everyone spoke like it, that. Is, isn't that a misnomer because basically all the old films you watched, all the actors were just very well-spoken and well-educated. Same Stop with trying to officers. whitewash history, Chris. <laughs> Same with the... Uh, uh, <laughs> Don't ruin uh, this for me, Grant. When you, when you see like the pilots and captains of planes like, chocks away and things like that in the second <laughs> yeah. of First World War, they're like, they're all yeah, commoners yeah. Uh, or like wide boys or whatever, but because the actors were well-spoken, posh, rather trained <laughs> yeah. thespians, they all came across as very, very posh, well-spoken. Raw. Well, I, I don't know. It's, it's something very comforting about it. I know it's a thing. I know it's a recognized thing. But I, if I was on an airplane and the captain came on going, all right, our kids, I'd be a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the posh guy? <laughs> Get him back here. <laughs> all right, mate. All right, mate. <laughs> this is Derek from Dudley on your Virgin Atlantic flight. <laughs> this is your captain speaking. <laughs> it was like a cockney. Like, it would be terrifying. Like. We're going to land this fucking plane, you cunts. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Bring back the 1920s toff. <laughs> right. Well, now that we've established all of Let's that. Let's get our best yeah. Scottish accents on now, then. Uh, yeah. Thanks to everyone who supports the show. Let's do that bit. Yeah. We all love let's that. Do that. Bit. We really enjoy yeah. that bit. Um, let's get the thanks out of the way first. Yeah, so thank you. And um, if you want to support the show, and we do need your support because we love doing this stuff and we want to do more of it, but we can't do more of it unless you support us. So Because yeah, we're coin-operated, so send us your coinage. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask where we put the coins, okay? It's, uh, I don't ask. We do accept credit card as well. Do not ask where we put those. But if you want to support the show, you can jump on Patreon and for just three pounds, you can join our Discord, you can support the show, and you can help fight racism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? You could do. You could fight racism without donating money. You could just do that in your own time because it's the right thing to do. However, donating three you pounds could kill will... two birds with one stone, fight racism, and pay us. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> and three pounds is nothing, isn't it, Kral? Like it's just it's a nice. It's, it's it's not nothing. I mean, it ain't four pound. It ain't even three pound fifty. <laughs> it ain't nothing. But it's it's. I think it's pretty good value. You know, I think that's pretty good value for what you get. Yeah, and I think the people on our Discord would agree because we've conditioned them that way. Thanks, Discord. Yeah, that's right, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Mr. Discord with us today. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. Discord? Well, I think it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> anyway, uh, for an extra two pounds, you can gain access to the full back catalogue of our bonus series, Chunks of Dark, in which we grill Darren on uh, the things that he'd said or did not say. <laughs> yeah, mm. turn, most episodes these days turn into a court case with Crowlin saying, on April 21st, <laughs> you say, <laughs> you stated, sir. State. <laughs> Darren's like, no, I didn't, Governor. I don't know why he's now a 1920s common. 
Child otherwise animals. get a yeah. sock puppet out. <laughs> no, I did no yeah. such thing. <laughs> yes, you <we> did. Yeah. <laughs> now show me on the sock puppet where he touched you. <laughs> If you don't want to listen to Chunks of Darn, that's fine, because sometimes, you know, our, our free stuff's probably enough. If you want to uh, support the show, you can buy merch. That's another way that you can support us. You can go on our website. We have lots of our logos. We also have little picture logos that we've made for some of the ads, uh, and more of them are coming out. You can get them on all. Well, you can even get our faces on a wide array of different things, which is still quite disturbing. What kind of things? Uh, you can have them on uh, tapestries, just your tapestries. Just, just your average. You know uh, the way the way home. you would, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the way you would. Yeah. Although Mo, big shout out to him, messaged me the other day to tell me that he, this is our community manager, to tell me that he was buying a tapestry uh, with the laying down the lower logo on it to wear as a cape. It's pretty cool, right? Mm. Okay, all right. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for your input, Mo. Um, <laughs> You put a cape wearing Scandinavian as manager of our yeah. community. All right. And okay. that, and that, you can imagine the hijinks that go on as a result. If that doesn't tick the inclusive box, bam. <laughs> I, I don't know what does. Uh, or if you if you're into the hobby and you you want hobby materials, paints, brushes, um, all of those lovely things are available via. We our make water. them too. What? <laughs> <laughs> we do not but we should but all of those things are available via our quartermaster link in the description where you also find all of our sponsor our current active sponsors right well that's all of that now craliteration you know what time is mm. hello Reichland. it's time for Sarat's every recap <laughs> Before I carry on, can I just ask why does why do they say hello Reichland in particular? Why Reichland? Right, it's the province. It's the kind of preeminent province within the empire. It's where Altdorf is, the capital of the empire. Okay, it's like Londinium or something. Yes, it's that kind the, of idea. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, cool, cool. All right, fine. All right, cool. Onwards then. Uh, episode 42, it was... Let me just quickly gloss over this. Ah, yes, it's all coming back to me now. Here we go. <laughs> uh, the back. first Chaos followers following the collapse of the Polar Gates, Darren, don't you know? Bellacor. What's yeah, significant about Bellacor? Ever heard of him, Ben? Bellacor? I've heard Bellacor? of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. quite a Yeah, yeah the first guy. Chaos champion. I, 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 Darren seemed to flip between Daniel Bellacor. I don't know if he was the first Chaos champion, the first Demon Prince. No, that was Stephen Bellacor. Stephen What Bellacor, am I doing with my life that something so obvious and memorable is forgotten? Within well, when you keep flitting between the two different things, Daniel, Stephen, you know, which one is it? <laughs> At the end of the day. <laughs> and, who, and who cares and who oh, cares indeed oh thanks yeah. <laughs> great great well this is going to go very well <laughs> uh, shut up Naren there was the creation of the cow's <laughs> vortex um, which reduced the demonic presence around the world and allowed uh, races like the dwarves to start populating more areas of the world like the length of the world's edge mountains and east to Zorn Uzgil the great skull land guess what's there Ben where the chores Skulls. were created the tusky oh. chorfs. Tuskies. The tusks. The tusks. I also like the implication that as soon as the great vortex got switched on, all the dwarves start fucking. <laughs> I thought that was, that was brilliant. <laughs> Commence repopulation. <laughs> is, that, is that what I said? Yeah. I don't know. That was five seconds ago. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Krallen says the craziest things is going to be the name of my next podcast. <laughs> the uh, the Great Vortex also allowed... No, that's not right. You can tell I, I'm just rereading this now, can't you? <laughs> this reminds me of classic WhatsApp recaps where I oh, just... Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it back. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Chaos followers. Something about the destruction of the chaos, the Skaven engine under the earth. Destroying large areas, which allowed Chaos followers to raid into more areas. Oh, yeah. There was the recruitment of ogres by Chaos. At what low, low price, Ben? I mean, it's not as low as £3 oh, yeah, a month. Oh, yeah, it was the cost of uh, one human per day, per ogre per day. That's right, that's and right. Then, you still get more them. value yeah. for paying like £5 a month favors, to Patreon. Right, and that's, and that's where we get the phrase, per munchin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you say it wasn't for sexual favours. What did they do with those humans? 
Hmm? Darren didn't expand on that. It just said one human per ogre. It, and then he said, and then both of us said for food, and he says yes. <laughs> it's where okay, ogres fine. invented their uh, trademark screaming dildos. <laughs> <laughs> now with real screaming action. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it goes muffled. I know you're talking about the limited edition gagged version, bro. <laughs> no, you put it in the wrong end, Jeremy. I don't know what the logo's called, Jeremy. Literally ribbed for your pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> now with real flailing action. <laughs> it's the wacky waving inflatable arm flailing ogre. Dildo, dildo. man. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, something about Gary and Tr- Trinovantes. Ole! And their sister Ravenna, who might have been Sigmar's lover slash daughter slash grandmother, who knows... <laughs> Garen um, wants revenge on Sigmar because he blames him for Trinavanti's death or something, but ultimately kills his own sister, which is, he had to be there, really. And, but also stabbed Sigmar and also gave him a bit of a, a bit of a cold, didn't he? The poison gave him a bit of, gave him the sniffles. Yeah, but Sigmar's like Chuck Norris, the fucking, you know what I mean? He just walked it off. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. The only man to kill two stones with one bird. Yeah. That's right, man. That's right. And I'm done. Crow. I, yeah. I, I thought it was good. It was a good recap. Did you that read that? Fa- yeah, that was fairly expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I say, I think it, it it smacked a bit of classic WhatsApp recap where I just kind of ranted a bit and didn't know what the next sentence was going to be. And, <laughs> you know it was I mean? it was a it was a meander. Nos- I, nostalgia. I, I, uh, Nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> a nostalgic WhatsApp recap. Should we? So I think we should have some more nostalgic uh, WhatsApp recaps. Can we bring back? Uh, can we have like a, a one-time return to Herbert the pervert? Oh God! At oh, some God. point in the episode, at some point. <laughs> yeah, at some point. Oh. I repressed that bloody memory. Who, who was the other one that you did? Tony Blackburn. Tony Blackburn. <laughs> <laughs> Trinavantes <laughs> and Ravenna. Don't be putting all the work on Chris. We've not heard anything from any races choir in quite a while, Ben. That's true. And I, do you know what? It's on it. Well, it was on my list to do, but then I wasn't sure whether a Skaven choir uh, song would do well in the middle of a chaos series. Well, they started out as chaos rap men, so maybe. Oh, okay. Um, there was a mention of um, the Yellow Submarine by the Beatles a few oh, yes, episodes yeah. ago. So maybe maybe the Skaven Choir might attempt that. Other vehicles are available. Yeah. Other vehicles are Other available. colours are available. <laughs> Easy, <races>. Chris. <laughs> Mustard. We're fighting racism, Chris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'll, well, if you pay the three pounds. I mean, if you don't pay the three pounds, then <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. Well, thanks for that, Carl. I was uh it was your Vilkeman. It was a trip down memory lane, like memory lane. Crow, have you got your have you got your foam tentacle? I've got my mutation to, at the ready. You can You won't be able to yeah. answer any questions. Ask any I questions uh, if you want. Cool. I have a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, Dar. What? Where are we going? Where are we going? What are we doing? Who are we talking about? Right, and, uh, and who are we doing it with? Nostalgically uh, mentioned the. We left off with the rise of... That really does look like it's sucking your brain out, Chris. Oh, that was fast. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Suddenly, I think it's it's actually putting brain back in. You laugh, but it's your mum's tentacle. Ha! Burn! (laughs) Nice one, Chris. Right? Let me just cover up Chris's camera here. (laughs) So we we closed out last uh, episode with... The rise to power, the, the tragic backstory uh, of Garion. With hilarious uh, who, consequences. Who became <laughs> Azazel eventually. Uh, and we'll return to Azazel when we do a deep dive into the kind of more notable characters of, uh, of Chaos. Sounds like a, a, I don't know if this is the right description, but like a Yiddish name. Is it Iga- okay. Azazel? Az- 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 Azazel. Azazel. Azazel, is, Azazel is from Yiddish folklore. It's, uh, it's from, I don't know if it's in the Talmud. I think it's mentioned in the Bible. It's the demon of the wilderness. Oh, you, wow. Are you aware of the concept of, uh, you know, the phrase scapegoat? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
way back when with their various traditions, all the sins of a community would be spoken into a goat or in some way. I like the idea of just into roaring a into a goat's mouth. Into his ah! anus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two at a time. <laughs> Let's DP this goat. <laughs> and then that goat would be, uh, maybe not literally, fucked off a cliff. Right. Uh, okay. And killed. So it's sacrificing wow. their sins to the you know the the demon of the wilderness i'm not entirely sure i'm putting it correctly wow Jeez. and that is horribly mangled and i'm i've no doubt got it wrong but that's or, or the details wrong but that's uh, where scapegoat comes from it wasn't a goat it was a budgie and it wasn't a scape <laughs> yeah <laughs> <It was a> <laughs> <spoon. laughs> you of course you're you're completely aware of that massive massive tradition of the spoon budgie yeah. <laughs> yeah, launching it off a cliff. It's a strange yeah. tradition. <laughs> so, so I, I, the desert I, is the desert is just full of budgies carrying spoons. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I I must have missed that in the last episode. So it turned out that Garyon was actually Azazel. I I he, remember he, 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 he was, became mm. Azazel. Oh, he became yeah. Azazel. Was that yeah. was that then? Was that like after his bar mitzvah? Dan, was that like Daniel Bellacor becoming Bellacor? It was like that kind. Uh, Kind of Gary, idea, Gary, yeah. and then he was renamed when he became. When uh, we left him, he was still human. He right. eventually becomes a demon prince, and we'll we'll uh, dive into his. Uh, I was going to say backstory, but that sounds needlessly sexual. Mm, uh, mm. His, uh, yeah, his story. Uh, his back in a few episodes time. <laughs> we'll dive into his back <laughs> on the back of a goat <laughs> <laughs> of a spoon budgie. <laughs> so we we also closed out with the confusing story of Morcar, the first ever chosen of Chaos. Was he the first ever chosen of Chaos? Did he fight Sigmar and was killed by Sigmar? Or well, yes, did he just he, said he was the first uh, ever chosen of Chaos. So, I'm <laughs> but why was it end. confusing, Kral? Because I'm always confused. <laughs> it's true look at his face <laughs> it's so true why is there a blanket behind me <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I don't know um, yeah so the confusion was uh, was he alive during the time of Sigmar or was he the Morcar that was originally mentioned that led the chaos forces against Ulthwin you know uh, around about when the great vortex was created is this is this a Warhammer fact are we being tested true true <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay. Yeah. An- answer D. <laughs> <laughs> wrong show, guys. Wrong show. Uh, okay, okay. So there, okay. there's been there's been a, a, a just over a dozen ever chosen of chaos throughout the kind of storyline of the Warriors of Chaos. Very few are actually named, and the ones that are named are only kind of throwaway comments. The second ever chosen is a warrior called Van Gel. They're renowned for binding a greater demon uh, known as uh, Uzhul into a magical sword. And that sword is the Slayer of Kings, which is the, the kind of hereditary blade of the Everchosen. What, um, was, what was his name? Uzhul. Uzhul. Yeah. Sounds a lot like um, Paul Atreides' name yeah. given by, uh, the, by the Fremen, wasn't it? They called him yeah. Uzhul? Now, what we'll do now is we'll just say Lisa and Al Gaib and move on. Hey, burr, <laughs> burr. <laughs> Don't get it. Crow, <laughs> you, <get> <laughs> you will when we get round to laying down the lore, Dune. Oh, God. You mean laying Dune the lore? Yes! Hey! <laughs> 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 Uh, and then at, at some other stage, you'll recall um, that uh, ever chosens are crowned by Bellacor uh, as punishment. Begrudgingly. Mm, yeah. Fucking ever chosen cunt. He's the forced haberdashery assistant of chaos. <laughs> so yeah. there was another ever chosen called uh, Cardun the Gloried, and Bellacor tried to kind of uh, uh, pull some of his little. Uh, tricks shall we say so as he crowned as he placed the crown on top of cardin cardin's head he possessed the, cl- the he possessed the clown that was literally what i was just about to say <laughs> if, there's, if there's one thing more terrifying 
than a clone gonna, that's a possessed <laughs> clone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it. He possessed the clone that is Cardon and <laughs> basically took over his body and tried to escape his fate that way so that he could become like the ultimate ever chosen of chaos. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Cardon's body sort of dissolved away into dust uh, because Bello, you know, the essence of not only all the gifts of the chaos gods was, you know, it, it really stretches the kind of bounds of physicality. But then you're also containing the essence of the first demon prince ever, Chris, and uh, me. You know yeah. that that's 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 going to give you a that's going to give you. A, <laughs> it's going to give you like, like a good case of the sniffles, a good case mm. of the dusty sniffles. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. Mm. So he just mm. melted, basically. Effectively, yeah. Too much chaos energy. Too much chaos energy. Wow. Shit. Okay. So from the year one, what we find is very similar to the orcs, that chaos is only really recorded in the histories of other races. There are some exceptions. But in general, they're reflected in the accounts uh, or kind of the timelines of other uh, races, as it were. We see a lot of smaller skirmishes that turn into kind of larger problems. Uh, the first couple of instances are with the dwarves and the dark elves, both of which end up um, fighting full kind of major battles against chaos to get rid of invasion in the early 200s of uh, AS, I believe is the uh, timeline we're sticking with, the reference, which doesn't at all stand for ass spiders. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's very triggering. Yeah. <laughs> How's your recovery going, Crow? Oh, it, was, it was going all right until someone said the uh, dropped the A-bomb. <laughs> I'm going to have to grab what? my doggy treats, which I substitute for ass spiders, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> stick one up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, like Mel Gibson in uh, Lethal Weapon when he's trying to quit smoking, he just keeps eating onions. <laughs> that's, that's your that's your alternative plan. Yeah. <laughs> I was, well, you were going, you were going to say like Mel Gibson. I was going, is he an alcoholic? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we see armies led by Malekith raging against the invading chaos forces. You'll recall the top of Nagaroth now has these great eleven city-sized towers oh, yeah. that. Um, hold huge armies uh, to be able to fight off the forces of, I'm not going to say evil, the, of uh, of them. Misunderstood. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. In terms of the dwarves, they fought the what's referred to as the Battle of the Black Lake, where uh, a dwarf uh, army in a column was going around the edge of a large frozen lake, and then suddenly, bam, Chaos Forsaken troops. Now, the Forsaken are Chaos Warriors who have received too many mutations, uh, and they kind of band together as this kind of um, sad sack force. How many mutations is too many mutations? That's a good question. Six. We, there is a, good a, answer, we, we talked about this. Yeah, six. You no, get there more is than a threshold. Six. Yeah, you, okay. you get more than six, and regardless of your uh, achievements, you're going to end up as a Chaos Spawn. Okay. Yikes. Uh, but yes, yeah, so these Forsaken break out from underneath the ice, you know, like the penguins of Madagascar, and attack mm. the uh, <laughs> annoying attack the dwarves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a mild <laughs> irritation. <laughs> Get away from yeah. the chaos penguin. <laughs> Why does that I one just... keep speaking like William Shatner? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we see chaos kind of fall on itself as well. Uh, in kind of fighting, not as like a pratfall. That would just be weird. <laughs> so an example of this is the uh, forces of Charles the Damned, who I really want to rename Charlene the Damned, because I think that's a great... Lurleen. That would be a, a great band uh, name for an Australian metal group, yeah. Charlene yeah. and the Damned. Mm. So they fell upon the forces of a beast man... A warlord called Graknor Manrender. Which is a wow. great name. 
What does he do? <laughs> Bracknor <Yeah>. Manrender. <laughs> Said in an Alan Rickman. Played by Alan Rickman. <laughs> <laughs> Bracknor. <laughs> And so he sends it, uh, uh, Charle, Charlene sends in their um, Hellstriders, which are a Chaos Marauders who have been granted, who've been gifted by Slanesh these enormous pincer claws, oh, and yeah. who, who ride, probably literally as well, steeds of Slanesh. And so over the space of an hour, uh, they whip through, back and forward, through the... Uh, the man renders forces and skin the beast men alive Whoa. and eventually Flay them. nail them yeah they, they nail them to uh, trees surrounding the herd stones we've not discussed herd stones before these are the kind of many monolithic stones that the beast men uh, worship as a focus of chaos energy uh, but the Slanesh being Slanesh, Charlene's forces are sent into kind of orgasmic, quivering pleasure uh, at the screams of agony from the, the beast men. So, you know, chaos gets what chaos wants. Yeah. Wow. Charlene makes me conjure up images of like a woman from the deep south. Charlene and her chaos. <laughs> I, I something or others. Her, hey, y'all. Him, her talking in like, Ricky voice from EastEnders. Charlene! <laughs> yeah. Charlene! <laughs> so, it's, um, uh, do, the, do the followers of Slash, because I know in 40k we've talked about like Slanesh's noise marines getting, yeah. they have, uh, is it implants that cause them pleasure from pain? Yes. Do, is it similar, is there a kind of magical version of that in this instance? Uh, I think it's in the fantasy version, it's more the kind of titillating nature of excess. Right. But that that still is geared towards individuals. And what I mean by that is an individual will have kinks, let's say. Right. Okay. Pursuing that uh, is the thing that they're interested in, but it's also, also their addiction, you know, when it comes to Slanesh. So you might have some members of that force are like, oh God, I just love the screams. And then others are like, meh, it doesn't really do that yeah. much for me. You know, yeah, I yeah. prefer, I prefer hobnobs. I, I, <laughs> I, I prefer nailing people to trees. <laughs> it's very niche. It's very niche. Dressed as clowns. I'm a Pisces, you know. <laughs> and I like to be watched by a friend dressed in a Superman outfit. It gets me. Ro it gets me rock hard, like this tree that I'm nailing people to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not the, the kind of forces of chaos are, are are sweeping the world, usually through land, but now occasionally by sea. And so this is where we find the great Norskin explorer Lost Ericsson. Lo uh, lost, lost Ericsson. Lost Ericsson. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a good navigator's name, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you were well, named that, that would be the last career path you'd choose, wouldn't you? Like, <laughs> yeah, a guide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're just oh, assuming, <laughs> we're assuming that it means lost son of Eric because, you know, our colonial privilege. It could be something else in their own language. Yeah. He's just a shit cartographer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gold everyone seems to have coincidental don't names, don't they? They do, yeah. Uh, yeah, like Azak like the purpose. Slaughterer. I didn't choose to be a slaughterer. <laughs> yeah. The game chose me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My name is actually Barbara the Slaughterer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Lost Erickson is the first old worlder to sail across the great ocean and make it to Lustria. So this, is where, Ooh, right. this is where Lustria was discovered, in quotes, uh, by the denizens of the Old World. And they set up a settlement, a Norskan settlement called Skeggy. Great name. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh um, mate, great childhood holidays at Skegness. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wonder, is there, uh, so it was the Norskans that, that did that. And they were the, they're the kind of Viking-esque sort of jobbies, aren't they're, they? Yes, they're, they're the... Tri they're the Viking tribe of Chaos Marauders. Is yeah. there um, some historical relevance to the name or names similar to Skeg? Because in 
the Witcher, the Viking lot are Skellige. from Skellige. Is there is there a, a, re- a relevance to that name? Is it? Well, is I'm going to throw this open to the audience because I have no fucking idea. Moving okay. on. They, okay. <laughs> so they set up the aptly named in shrug Skeggy uh, and return <laughs> to the old world uh, to get a larger force, and they return with an enormous army of raiders, all in their longboats, all looking very kind of profound at returning to a settlement that may or may not be significantly named. And so we see a lot of Chaos Marauders and Warriors of Chaos uh, head off into Lustria, um, seeking not only gold, but to glorify the names of the Chaos Gods. Mm. Well, shit. We should point out at this stage that not, not all the results of Chaos battles are viewed as bad by their enemies and in 1119 a chaos champion called Garad the Ox dueled an electrocount called Wolfgang von Greyheart who was extremely hated by his followers um, even by his army and during the duel which he eventually wins and takes Wolfgang's head as a drinking vessel during the duel Garad is absolutely gobsmacked uh, as he is cheered on by all the women of the township where the uh, where the duel is happening, and kind of confusingly pleased, he leaves the town and all the all its inhabitants alive and just marches off. <laughs> 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 go on, you Garad, brilliant. <laughs> I want to go back. I want to go back to this whole uh, using a head as a drinking vessel. Sounds yeah. doesn't sound particularly efficient. How how does that work? I think it's more a status thing than a you know utensil. Functional, thing. right? I yeah. don't think he enjoys it. <laughs> I don't think anyone will. No, because you're you're a fucking drinking vessel. <laughs> <laughs> Stop looking at me whilst I'm drinking out of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> one assumes upside down the skull is upside down yes yeah but then i was thinking it. like if it was just a skull there's quite a lot of holes in the rest <laughs> of it isn't there so like you know yeah you'd have to like hold it in a funny way like this is my, this is my drink it's my drinking vessel Put two really, thumbs through really the eye sockets right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like yeah. hand around the ear holes <laughs> No, it's like it's like it's like a chugger. Like you, somebody pours the drink in the top, and then you put your hang, ha, fingers in the eye holes, and then you just drink out of the mouth. Sort of. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> just on a side note, I just quickly googled Skellig. It is an island off the coast of uh, uh, Ireland, and apparently, legend states that the Hermitage of Skellig baptized Olive Trigvason. The, the Viking in nineteen in 993, who later became the king of Norway. So that must be where the relevance of that name came. Isn't that also where uh, Luke Skywalker hid? Yeah, I think it is. I think it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Moving so, on. There, there you go. So it's just into it. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Legend upon legend upon legend. Returning to the kind of evil side of Chios, we see that the demon princess of Corn, a Valkyr the Bloody, Descends upon the northernmost stronghold of the dwarves, Carrot Gulag. She's uh, a right charver. <laughs> <laughs> and she drives the kind of warriors of chaos that are absolutely insane. And all they do is just charge into dwarven shield lines. So, what else you know, she also drives? An Audi again. TT or a and Land Rover Evoke. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds like that kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately uh, breaches the dwarf lines and commands the forces of chaos to take every single uh, surviving dwarf and perform upon them the blood raven which is to open up oh, yeah. their chests and flop their lungs out either side of their on their shoulders so it looks like a raven resting on your dead body uh, wow. But they think it looks really pretty, and everyone else is like, oh my god, that is <laughs> yeah. horrific. They're like, but I just did a thing. It's oh, like, yeah, really it's nice. Like, <laughs> to me, that would be the same as decoupage. I, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> I don't understand it at all. 
What's anyway, a decoupage? Are they are they alive when they have their lungs? The, yes, decoupage is where um, middle-aged people, usually women, I'm checking my sexism, do scrapbooking of people's lungs. Yes. Of people's lives. Of people's lungs. Lungs. I've completely made that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys just look so confused. Brilliant. So so is the Blood Raven, do they do it when they're alive? Yes. Right, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, and uh, corn, the um, the kind of well God. <laughs> yeah. And corn, the god of uh, <laughs> who, 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 of whom Valkyrie the bloody is a demon prince, demon princess. I like how you feel you need to explain who Corn is. And Corn, the uh I don't know the, if we the, talked about him the, before. Nev- never heard yeah. of him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Corn is really kind of uh titillated by this and declares that Valkia is now his consort. Good Ooh. on you, Corn. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Punching above his weight, isn't he? Yeah. I think yeah. what they do is they they go around killing as a couple rather than any kind of slaneshi sexy times. Yeah, I was going to say, how does that work? Because she's a, a being and he's a... An, an Star-crossed he's a, lovers, mate. He's a, he's a lovers. concept. <laughs> he's a concept. <laughs> <laughs> Have you it's met like my wife? You, uh... yeah. Have you met my wife? Wistfulness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a difficult one to uh, picture. <laughs> and he's a concept. It's like when you read about those uh, women or people who uh, like marry trains. Women are people, or Chris. Something. Women are women people. or people. One or the other. Who uh, <laughs> marry what? <laughs> like inanimate <laughs> objects, like train stations and yeah. things like that. Have you seen that? Like they just fall in love with. Like, oh, yeah, radiators. <laughs> like, <laughs> often in so, America, go figure. I don't know. I'm not suggesting anything. <laughs> I'm just saying what I read. It seems like a <laughs> simpler relationship, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> absolutely. Are you cold, love? <laughs> like, <just laughs> turn up your thermostat radiator valve. There, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> just staying with the um, with the god corn, who is uh, well, we've discussed him previously. <laughs> There's a, another champion, Castrogar, who breaks into a goblin hive, a goblin warren or lair, and issuing any kind of weapons, deciding that goblins were too puny to use weapons, he killed every single goblin in this tribe's lair with his bare hands. Wow. And as he killed the last one, uh, he ascended to demonhood because he had killed tens of thousands of goblins that's amazing wow <laughs> <laughs> i mean that that is the definition of grinding like reminds yeah. me of like <laughs> playing world of warcraft or and Diablo. just killing npc after npc <laughs> after like you know the really low level shit to i don't know level up your sword skill or something like that like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. jesus oh. christ <laughs> good times i mean good did he times. stop for a break how long did that take like well, I think when you're uh, possessed of the blood frenzy, you just keep going. Right, okay. It's like me when it's like me when I go for a long walk. Uh, if it starts going uphill, I'll go. Okay, I'm going to walk to that stone. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I'll walk to the next stone and then I'll stop. And no, the next stone, I'll stop at the next stone. Yeah. God, he's unstoppable. He's, God, so he's like, okay, life okay. Is awful. Ten more, ten more goblins, <laughs> and I'm going home. That's it. I'm going to ten more Because this last ten thousand, I think that's enough. Oh fuck! I'll do another hundred. Like, let's keep. Going. All right, uh, I'll clear. I'll clear this massive cavern, and then I'll treat myself with a shaman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and his mum shouting up to his bedroom. All right, you can kill five thousand more goblins, and then it's bedtime. <laughs> I'm pulling the power. I'm pulling the power. <laughs> But mom, I'm almost a demon prince. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you're a chaos god. You are going to bed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Castrogar, demon prince of chaos, goblin slayer. What a great... Absolute legend. Yeah. What a great Why was story. he called goblin slayer? Because <laughs> he's the one... That, yeah. <laughs> I'm pulling you... Like mate. <laughs> oh, dear. I wonder what he looks like. Is he just like a regular does he look like Popeye? Massive forearms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> covered in goblin bits. 
he, he just he loves a, he loves a good choke. Yeah. <laughs> we now come to a kind of initial mention of a, a fine fellow chaos sub race. Uh, a fine fellow probably talked like uh, English people in the twenties. Oh, hello, yeah. <laughs> hello. So this is where Malefax, dun dun dun. A rogue wizard, not a chaos sorcerer, a wizard of the Empire, who has umbrage with life itself, uh, calls down a comet or a huge firestorm on a glacier. Uh, I don't know if he was thirsty, if he just wanted a cup of tea. I don't know what his motivations were. He released Colex Sun Eater. The, the Malifax, Colex, and... Half a flex. <laughs> Douchebags. <laughs> the shittest Power Rangers you've ever seen. Yeah, why can't you have a normal name like Trinovantes? Or like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, so Colex Sun Eater is a dragon ogre, which is a centaur like mix of, well, a dragon and an ogre. Now, just to be wow. clear. It's the ogre top half and the dragon bottom <laughs> half. Because the other way is just weird. We get back into rat chimera. chimera yeah, rat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be like that episode of um, Red Dwarf where he talks about mermaids and cats. Oh, yeah. like, no, no, the other way around. And it's just the legs of a woman and just a massive <laughs> fish head. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kolek is uh, one of the great fathers of the dragon ogre race. And is referred to as a Shagoth. That's uh, that's his name. No jokes, you twats. I was waiting mm, for you to make jokes. I actually heard that name recently in a... Um, uh, <laughs> in a sex dungeon, I approve. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's actually my safe word. <laughs> Shagoth! Shagoth! <laughs> It, it wasn't particularly effective on that session because the gentleman that I was with was covered in white face paint and black clothes. Yeah. So <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. No, it's one of the it's one of the terms used in H.P. Lovecraft's Mountains of Madness story, and it's to describe slaves of uh, old ones. Basically, he mm. uses the same terminology as a lot of the Warhammer factions, but. So, uh, I was going to say Shagot. So, uh, Colex, Sun Eater, had actually been imprisoned in this glacier by high elf mages and uh, obviously breaks free from this now uh, melted glacier and resumes what can only be described as an electrifying rampage of destruction because dragon ogres, well, two other things describe dragon ogres, not kind of weird centaurs. Uh, the first is they're a very kind of martial race. They kind of march to battle in units. They're very well disciplined and they're absolute monsters, both physically and metaphorically, and will be used as a kind of a, a sledgehammer by the forces of Sledgehammer. On their... Oh, on their other, sledgehammer. <laughs> Why don't Colex. you call my name? <laughs> <laughs> I do imagine them in like psychedelic t-shirts, like eighties, like now <laughs> garish, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Like, it's the- more kind of late eighties S and M bondage straps is what they tend to wear. Hot mm. than anything mm. else. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> <laughs> leather on leather. Yeah, I, I, I suspect a lot of the enemy generals look over at Kolek and his troops and go, bet that guy fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tap that. Tap, tap that. that. Been there. So, <laughs> yeah, so they're incredibly well disciplined martial uh, warriors, but they're also lightning callers. They call down lightning not only on their enemies, but also on themselves because. It's because uh, it tingles. Much, <laughs> it's, it's how they stay sh- uh, in fit. It's the fantasy equivalent of a tens machine. So <laughs> they're just constantly zapping themselves. They're incredible. They're incredibly buff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm just working on my abs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> on a vibro plate. <laughs> yeah, they've got like really outdated '80s like fitness 
uh, solutions, <laughs> like fibro plates, and like they're just stuck and in the wrong decade. They've got all those chest expanders that they're pushing together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, those ones with the um, that had the three things that you had to put the three yeah. coils of metal, yeah, yeah. and if you did it with no t-shirt on, it just grabbed all the hair on your chest on the way and back. Pinched yeah. you. Did a lot of power walking. You call it marching. It was power walking. <laughs> <laughs> they power walked into battle. <laughs> but a lightning uh, rejuvenates them and in some cases regenerates them and so they're uh, it, they used to be in the warriors of chaos uh, army books is that if you had a unit of dragon ogres in your army your wizards gain an extra spell which is effectively you just electrocute your dragon ogres yourself and kind of buff them up and they rush into battle wow so <laughs> This is for your own good. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yep. <laughs> but they're all descended from a, the original kind of dragon ogre known as uh, Cracknerock the Black. Cracknerock. Lovely. Great Love name. It. Who made... No tentacles, Chris. Who made... Uh, uh, are you raising a question, Chris? Or is that just a tentacle? I'm raising my tentacle to ask a question. Yes. So they're half dragon, half ogre. Yes. So are they born out of eggs or are they born live uh great question i suspect they're born with their bottom half in an egg okay like weebles <laughs> they just like roll around. yeah and they just kind of sit there <laughs> <Mwah! on site. laughs> but they made their their entire race made a deal with um the chaos gods for immortality and what they did was they went to several of their kind of meeting grounds, their ritual uh, areas where they kind of made deals and um, compromised. And no, they didn't. They didn't compromise. They're evil. They did great, horrible things at these meeting grounds. Probably like bingo, but it was not all staged. <laughs> they knew who the winner was before that, that kind of idea. All of these kind of gathering areas, these sites of worship for the dragon ogres are encircled by a, a continuous thing of skulls around the edge. And <laughs> Behold, my continuous thing of skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe that a bit better? <laughs> All right, rude. Um, it's a, <laughs> Was it like a sushi restaurant? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> don't put the school back after you picked it up Jesus <laughs> and don't get the red so, ones they're really expensive <laughs> yeah. so the boundary of their kind of uh, ritual sites are uh, outlined in skulls lots and okay. lots of skulls yes. ah the yeah. thing of skulls okay. <laughs> the yeah. thing of skulls yeah <laughs> And what's of interesting note is these areas within that boundary of the Thing of Skulls, it's utterly immune to the force of chaos. Oh, uh, the warping nature of chaos. There, it's like reality anchors. Nothing right. can... Uh, rankers. Just rankers, yeah. <laughs> Luke Skywalker again. <laughs> um, they... <laughs> Cairo! Um, <laughs> the uh, the the deal that they made effectively, if a demon of chaos ever crosses the thing of skulls into these uh, ritual sites, then the bargain is null and void, and so the gods of chaos go to great lengths to keep any kind of chaos creature away from uh, these sites. So it's one of the safer places in the world if you can hide from dragon ogres. That's crazy. So it's if like... you if if you hide in a massive skull, you're completely safe. Yeah, you might get drank, but you're yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small price to pay to have relief from chaos. Um, it's like is it Arc de Triomphe in France, where uh, apparently I don't know if this is true, but every time you drive through, because it's like an eight lane wide roundabout, basically. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, all insurance is null and void whilst you pass through Arc de Triomphe. Is uh, it your car insurance? Wow. Yeah, so I, th I think I heard that, that, that. I heard that back in high school, but I don't know if that's if that's actually true or not. That's what, I don't, that? that's what it reminds me of. Are there still Nazis there? What? <laughs> 
<laughs> Hiding in the Arc de Triomphe. <laughs> Snipers. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's the, You've lost it's me. A, uh, My point uh, is... <laughs> Don't go to France. Yeah, we got you. Don't, don't go to France. <laughs> <laughs> so that You're the thing of skulls, French, French tourist board. <laughs> French it, tourist board. It's it's chaos. It's chaos nullifying. Basically, if you want a bit of relief. Oh, from chaos. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why would you? Why did they want that then? They just didn't want the kind of mutating. Well, you got to come up for air sometimes. You don't. You, don't, you can have too much of a good thing. They needed like a, it's like a spa. It's like a day, Chill <laughs> day out release. Zone. Yeah, you know when you've done it, <laughs> overdone it at the club. Yeah, you have you a need. little sin at the back. You're just like, yeah, no, I'm here with my mate. I'm looking after him. He's all right, mate. Can I just get some water for him? Yeah, so yeah, he's, yeah, just, yeah. he's just overdone it. He's just he's overdone just smacking it. smacking out a little bit. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be, right. mm. He'll be all right. You're you're right, Johnny. You're right, Johnny. He's all right. He's all right. He's, he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. No, 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 no. We'll go dancing in a bit, mate. No, no. We're in the club. We're in the club. We're in it. We're just taking a breather. <laughs> Crowd, this is getting. Yeah, really we can go real. for a cigarette. We'll and go for a cigarette. To trigger me, all right? Let's bring back some fucking horrible memories. Can we move? Hey, puny listener, wishful thinking won't make your body stronger. But the brand new Dragon Ogre Lightning Fitness Center will. 46,000 square feet of cutting edge facilities, equipment, and classes to get your Dragon Ogre fit. Including vibro belt machines, chest expanders, Slenderizers, gyro wheels, and jazzercise. And when you're done pumping your iron, cool off and relax in one of our several continuous thing of skulls. So what are you waiting for? Join Dragon Ogre Fitness Center today. Staying with the theme of dragons, then within a within a <laughs> century of Colex Sun Eater being uh, freed, we find another dragon uh, awakes. You, this time to the sound of battle. So the the great chaos dragon Galrock. I don't know if you guys can remember who Galrock is. Galrock. We touched on him very briefly in the High Elf episodes. I know we've all mm. emotionally blocked out the High Elf episodes, but. I have not. It's not one of the main OG dragons that like Kalidor rides or something, is it? No, but during that same battle, uh, that uh, the battle for the Vortex, Galrock is effectively, he was the uh, golden drake of the High Elves who was possessed by a greater demon of Zinch. And so ah. his head, his head and neck just split in two. Oh uh, yeah, uh, and so it's now that that's what's considered to be the father of the kind of two-headed chaos dragons. Although, uh, as we'll touch on when we discuss heroes, uh, there's another dragon called Baudros, which is referred to as the father of chaos dragons. So once again, the continuity is a bit uh, a bit shifty. Did it did anyway, it split and stay split, or did it turn into two separate heads? It, it it split and stayed split. So there was actually a model for this, uh, for this bugger, and uh, it does look like uh, someone's just taken a knife and sliced right down the the head and neck of a dragon. Um, it's you know scar tissue and all this other kind of stuff there, right, but it okay. is uh, you, a you dragon. You can't see its scribblies inside. Uh, no, but the, the the spirit of Galrock, the original dragon, is still there, and every now and then. Uh, is able to kind of paralyze the paralyze its body by entering into kind of uh, emotional combat with the uh, the Lord of Change, who's referred to as Fate Claw. Wow. Um, yeah. So yes. Yeah, so he's uh, awoken by uh, the sounds of battle outside the cave that he's resting in or hibernating in. Shut the fuck up! Yeah. <laughs> I'm resting here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it's a, a huge uh, battle between several orc tribes and the Hung, one of the Chaos oh, yeah. uh, Marauder cultures. And so uh, Galrock flies out and kills almost everyone, including six wyverns that were sent to that the orc shaman sent to kill it. 
not only through kind of physical strength, but uh, the chaos, or sorry, uh, Galrock is able to breathe different types of uh, weapon from its mouth, from either head. One is a kind of dark fire that kind of burns you out of existence. And the second is a uh, a kind of magical mutating breath, like really, really bad halitosis, <laughs> where he, he breathes on you and you mutate into, you know, chaos spawn. Um, what? So, yeah. Or morning great. breath. As we morning call breath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Morning love. Oh, my God. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> We're now into the the kind of twenty one hundreds of um, the imperial calendar, so we're getting quite close to the old world game is set, and so we start seeing some familiar names uh, will start popping up, and one of them is a, a champion of Zinch called Equal Hellbrass. Now we will dive into uh, Hellbrass's story uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, later on, but the interesting thing about him is, is he was granted a gift referred to as the breath of life, which means that wherever he walks, whatever he touches, uh, generates new life. So much like the poor, the agricultural version of King Midas from our own <laughs> myths. So as so does it. Sorry, does he just do they encourage life? So, like, if you walk past like a flower, a, 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 a flower bed, the flowers will just bloom. Or yes, that, that, they come self aware and start attacking it, you. No, every, <laughs> everything he touches, he just turns them into a big pile of barley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! But I mean, it's it's really things he touches. So as he walks, there's a a, a verdant green path springs up behind him. Uh, right. from his footsteps uh, if he touches like doors or you know spear staffs they you know grow into small trees very very quickly he must be a nightmare on battle like, god yeah. damn it why have you turned my spear into a tree I can't stab anyone <laughs> <No>. with this <laughs> yes but you can make more spears from the tree oh, okay yeah. not much of a, in the middle of a battle yeah not much use to me. oh yeah let me just pause the battle shall we so the, the, the kind of tale of uh, Akold is pretty interesting, uh, and there is a, a section of the uh, kind of chaos wastes where he marches from his settlement uh, up to into the chaos wastes, uh, and there's just, uh, amongst all this devastation and broken ground and lava and all this kind of uh, what we would consider evil Mordor-style landscape, there's this beautiful kind of garden path right through the <laughs> middle of it, uh, and even Amazing. if even if it's uh, dug up, it still returns. It's uh, that's the, like a the weed. power of the breath of life um, uh, thing. What uh, effect does it have on touching an existing being or person? Uh, his his life giving touch. Uh, I don't think it has any real effect. I mean, we, we okay. will dive into it in a bit more detail when we do heroes but uh it's more inanimate object organic inanimate uh objects like ben yeah. <laughs> hi hi so now we're well into the the kind of timeline for the old world game uh, and really there's only uh, two or three things mentioned within that section. The first being that, if you'll recall, Werner Thunderfist. Oh, yeah. You remember Werner, Werner Thunderfist? Yeah. His tale, his story is translated from his rise to a Chaos Champion to his ascension to Demon Prince. And as they are writing down the name of the Demon Prince he turns into the entire town burns down so you know don't speak his name he who shall not be named the uh, oh, okay. the verna something yeah. or other <laughs> don't say it Kral. Oh. Kral. that sheet behind you looks fucking flammable <laughs> 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 yeah. we then get into a, a a kind of ongoing battle roughly 10 years of uh, of combat between the chaos forces of the Norskans who raid the city of Kemri, uh, which is in 
the Nehekara, the land of the dead. So it's chaos forces coming down, raiding effectively fantasy Egypt of all its loot and returning back with a, enormous uh, amounts of treasure. But they had been killed, so many had been killed, so many of the raiders had been killed that uh, only a dozen make it back to Norska, but each of them has a ship just full of treasure. And to uh, not to take it uh, on the chin, uh, Setra the Imperishable, the great king of uh, Nehekara, leads a naval engagement with the forces of Chaos uh, and lands upon uh, Norska and doesn't leave until he has every single last bit of gold that was stolen from them. Uh, from the tombs by the the Norsemen, uh, and it's described as the snowdrifts and the glaciers just ran red with Norsken blood and froze. And to this day, there are still like the Bloodfall glacier still exists. That's so metal. It, uh, it, it is pretty metal. Uh, it's mm. pretty, well, pretty gold metal. to be specific. Yeah. Mm, mm. <laughs> are the tomb kings? They're the tomb kings by that point, aren't they? They're all yes, they yeah. are. Yeah, they have been so, for thousands of years. Yeah, have they got some sort of like mag- uh, magic? I was going to say magnetic, uh, magic draw. <laughs> I was say to- magnesium. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just sneeze. Um, so, yeah. I, I, yes, they, they do dra- have magneto. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do they? Uh, are they kind of magically drawn to their gold? Like, did they yes. know where yeah. it all was? Like it because just, it's, you know, it, it was all ritually buried with the kings uh, and priests of the time, so the kings and the priests are aware of where every single bit of their treasure is. That's yeah. cool. Love that. It'd be good for lo- like lose your keys, that kind of idea. Yeah, yeah, totally. Lose it would make your... having some sort of joint bank account a nightmare, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we now find ourselves in the year 2301. Do Signif- significant for two <laughs> reasons. Welcome to the world of tomorrow. <laughs> Today. <laughs> so yes, twenty zero one important for two reasons. The first being, it was a a year of incredibly odd and dark omens across the empire. So you had things where crops, like pelicans flying upside down. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, just pelicans. <laughs> and they weren't. They weren't even flapping. They were texting. <laughs> Upside down. <laughs> Upside down. Leg, That's a leg, weird leg, omen. Legs crossed. <laughs> legs. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just stretched out. Are those birds flying? No, I think that one's doing the backstroke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, play, plagues of inse- inse- I was, <laughs> plagues of insects cover the land. I was literally <laughs> saying plagues of incest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was fucking <laughs> their own cousins. It's very contagious. <laughs> I, I don't want to say Moorish, but it's very contagious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and a lot of these insects had the the tiny heads of people. Uh, no. So it wasn't a. It was like the fly in the original movie, the, the fly. fly. <laughs> some of the weirder. If that wasn't weird enough, some of the other weird things were wells would suddenly be but wait, filled with blood. There's more. Yeah, it's more. There's always more, Chris. Remember, this is Warhammer. There's yeah, another yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's thing. extra. Yeah, then yeah, let's yeah. take it even further off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were two instances or uh, multiple instances of of two kind of flavors pigs started to be born wearing crowns now that's unusual that is unusual and painful unusual. and p- painful well no uh, yeah well yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> pigs start wearing crowns and, and for real this isn't just one of your wacky no it's someone else's comments. wacky fiction chris yeah. oh, right. okay, <laughs> fine, yeah, yeah. and then all across the empire and in fact all across the old world pigs began to stand up on their hind legs and to scream with human voices oh, that weird that upsetting that's wonder what they were screaming freaky. 
I'm a fucking pig. <laughs> <laughs> Human. <laughs> Father. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Trotter. <laughs> Uh, and what all this signified was a, a, a ramp up of the force of chaos, the actual magical force of chaos within the old world, because da, 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 a chaos lord known as Azavar Kull was anointed or became the anointed, became the 12th ever chosen of chaos, crowned by, that's right, Daniel Bellacor. You guessed it. <laughs> D-Dog. I think, as we were I like D-Dog. to think like, after a while, like, yeah, okay, Bellacor was absolutely, you know, begrudged. He hated his role, but he actually owned it after a while, after like the yeah, sixth yeah. ever chosen. Just like, into it. He was the main event. Everyone loves seeing Bellacor yeah. again. Like, hey, Bellacor, who cares what the ever chosen is? It's and that was B. the other thing. And he's doing a DJ You're... set afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Burley, Burley, Burley. I, uh, <laughs> I, I actually think that he became quite condescendingly smug about the whole thing. Oh, so you're the 12th ever chosen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That must be nice. You're going to do great. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be the best one yet. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing that uh, Chaos had going for it is that we were still in what's referred to as the Age of Three Emperors where the empire was split between, well, three emperors, really. Um, <laughs> so there was multiple claimants to the throne. And, and the no three one... were Talapheim, oh. Maud, no, not Mordheim, Talapheim. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Come on, Ben. Wh- who are the three? Uh, Reichland. Reichland. No. Nope. Nope. Altdorf? Nope. No, Altdorf. Ta- Talapheim was definitely one of them, right? Yep. Middenheim? Middenheim. Hmm. Well, either is there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Marienburg is Marienburg. We said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and which one? Sorry, Marienburg. And... I think it's Ost Ostland Ostermark. Ostland. Ostland? That, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. this the what? Was this the famous bit where it was during like Vlad? Uh, oh no, Manfred possessed one of them, and it became his dad was a zombie. That's or something That's right. Like that. Yes, yeah, yeah. And he almost got away with it if it wasn't for those pesky the zo- kids. The zombie yeah. emperor. The I zombie know these aristocrats are weird, but that guy's eyeball is hanging out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everybody, take their eyes out. <laughs> so what we see then uh, at this time is, um, you know, a, a decentralized empire uh, where there's no authority figure. A, behind which everyone can rally. Uh, And so it's a very divided, uh, well, empire. And so the forces of the chaos field, now is the time. So we see a a huge kind of spike of chaos energy coming out of the polar gates. Obviously, we're dealing more and more with the north and the south. But what we find is that across uh, Kislev and uh, Troll country, which is technically part of Kislev and up into the Chaos Waste, all manner of weird, wacky, inflatable, flailing arm chaos monsters <laughs> start appearing uh, in the la- The chaosometer was pinging. Ping, 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 ping to the right. How ping, weird ping, would ping, that ping, be? Ping, 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 there's a massive chaos troll just doing that with its arms, walking towards you slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Acting normally. Really un- Hovering. Yeah, unnerving. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we see the rise of a lot of uh, chaos legions in terms of demonic legions. So uh, demons start sprouting up left, right, and center. Imagine that. You think you're pulling up a carrot and it's a blood letter. How upset would you be? <laughs> <laughs> what about that? Uh, just... <laughs> and then you, 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 you look at it. down again. <laughs> yeah, the, the last thing you see before you die is uh, this enormous demon with a the top of a carrot kind of tied to the top of <laughs> yeah. his head. No, just like a, joke, like a joke carrot hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as as the glasses, nose, and moustache thing he's wearing falls away. <laughs> yeah, Chaos is having like a competition. What's the most like dramatic way you can surprise a mortal? <laughs> like, I'm actually a demon. <laughs> I'm not a carrot at all. A pig standing sure. on his back leg screaming in the voice of a human. Yeah. It's pretty fucking mental. Uh, <laughs> I was out there. <laughs> or insects with human faces. 
That's the yeah. weirdest one. That's what yeah, they're yeah. screaming about. Ah, that bug has a human face. You're a pygmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pipe down you. I mean, do you, think, do you think it's one of those things where the pigs were just screaming at each other in constant surprise? That pig's talking. <gasps> that pig's talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this show. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in the in the kind of darker recesses of the empire we start seeing large kind of war herds of beast men gathering in the woods starting to raid villages and towns uh, being more bold in, in terms of their uh, reachings and fightings being Quite chaos and proud yeah being chaos and proud yes flaunting it uh, so <laughs> <laughs> what we also see is a, a, a huge increase in the number of ogre mercenaries coming over the um, World's Edge Mountains, literally and figuratively. And ultimately, both sides would find uh, use for them in their forces. When you say both sides, both good, uh, good and years. bad, yes. They, the good, ogres good are just, they're, they're, just they, mercenaries, they, man. They're just mercenaries. Right. So, yeah. so uh, you, you could get a... Uh, a, a war band of ogres on the chaos side, a war band of ogres on, let's say, the, sort of the human side. Yeah. And th they would fight each other. They, they, they would they fight each other, yeah. Okay, but interestingly, fine. the ones on the human side, their fee was the same as the ones on the chaos side. It was one human per ogre per day. Yeah. So the human forces <laughs> that hired them were like, God, I hope those fucking mercenaries get wiped out because I don't want to have to pay that bill, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it just must be it must be really unsettling to face off against a unit of like huge buff mercenary ogres with human screaming dildos uh, <laughs> attached to the front of them. I mean, in terms of intimidation, that's really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, I don't know where to look, <laughs> but I can't stop looking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can't stop looking. which begs the question: if it was. Chaos Marauders were the humans that were used. Do you think then that the the ogre human dildos, they'd be fighting as well? So they'd have axes. Uh, we're, we're going down a rabbit hole here. We're going down a rabbit hole. We'll move on. Like, we'll save it for chunks of dar. Let's just run in crotch first. <laughs> Get a <him>, mini-me. <laughs> Yeah, so as winter in 2301 kind of comes into full effect, the Chaos forces start marching south, uh, and they move down through Troll Country and into Kislev. They are spotted by the Outriders, the kind of horse archers of the Kislevite forces, who raise the alarm, and then reinforced by Imperial soldiers from Ostland, which is the northernmost Imperial province, Effectively, the entire Kislevite army and their allies move to intercept the Chaos Horde before it really crosses into Kislevite or Kislev proper. There's a titanic battle where two of the largest armies that have ever faced off against each other uh, just go toe to toe. Uh, and even though the Kislevites are fighting to defend their homeland and, you know, the true horror of the forces of chaos, uh, or to stop the true horror of the forces of chaos from reaching uh, Kislev and, and on into the old world, the Chaos Horse is effectively unstoppable uh, and destroys almost all of the Kislevite army. So this is even after a mass cavalry charge by Kislev's Griffin Legion. Steady then. These are cavalry knights who have these big, huge, kind of plumed back banners that uh, effectively roar as they walk into walk charge <laughs> if actually roar they as they saunter into combat <laughs> yeah ah so stab these are the griffin uh, legions but they're the actually griffin on horseback they're, 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 yes. they're not on oh, they're the it, griffin think, wannabes they saw elves like, on their griffins one time and were like oh, we can only dream let's put feathers on our horses <laughs> Are these are these griffin are these griffin riders like the same way that the um the dragon princes dragon princes the the elf mm. guys oh yeah the dragon knights of Calgary the yeah they're not actually dragons they're no just dressed they're, like dragons uh, yes but the the griffin legion aren't dressed like griffins uh, it's it, it's like That's a knight's temp it's like a knight's templar kind of deal 
right. if you see what I mean. It's a it's a, a holy order of the, the kind of Kislevite army. Anyway. But are they on they have a, no, no, they're right. on horses. Okay. This is going very so well. It's very confusing. Uh, I, I know. Yeah. yeah. You've got you've got Kislevites <laughs> on horseback pretending to be griffins. You've got elves on horseback pretending <laughs> to be dragons. You've got yeah. elves on griffins pretending to be cows or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all very weird. Moo! <laughs> Moo. And, and, yeah, chaos is going, and you think we're strange. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the Griffin Legion are able to collapse one flank of the Chaos Army. And it looks like they're going to be able to kind of hold their own against the the Chaos host uh, at the very border of Kislev. But unfortunately, that's when a certain dragon ogre Shagoth, K.A. Sun Eater, Kolek Sun Eater, uh, and his kind of uh, dragon ogre warband smash into, uh, kind of countercharge the Griffin Legion and destroy them. Uh, And in the space of an hour... it, you know how you say don't eat yellow snow there's nothing but red snow on the northern uh, borders of Kislev and uh, don't eat it and all uh, yeah don't do it well i mean there might be a cheeky daywalker uh oh yeah milling around oh yeah no chris sleep in the day a bl- Never bit mind. of a blood slushy <laughs> blood slushy <laughs> 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 Is that a sex thing? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, pausing only to destroy the northern reaches of Kislev, the Chaos forces move south and they uh, get to the banks of the River Lynx. Lynx? Linsk? I beg your pardon. They get to the banks of the River Linsk. Um, One more time. Linsk. Linsk. <laughs> Linsk. Welcome to Linksking down the lore. Uh, this is a very wide river, uh, and really the only way to cross it are at bridges. So the remaining forces of Kislev and their allies kind of defend the Kislev side of the bridges. Unfortunately, uh, Asafar Kull instructs his sorcerers to freeze the river. Uh, so the water. Uh, begins to freeze but also begins to turn red with kind of chaos blood energy that kind of idea and across the frozen river marches the you know the chaos chosen the the great champions of uh, asavar Kull. and because they're able to go between the bridges uh, which are miles apart, you end up with the surviving kind of detachments that are guarding each bridge just get absolutely decimated uh, from either side uh, by the forces of chaos. And ultimately what happens is that there's no army in Kislev to defend against the forces to stop them getting to the cities of Kislev and Prague and Erengrad. And so Prague then becomes the first main target of Asavar Kull. I- initially, he just sends wave after wave of beastmen against the uh, the city walls, and it drives the the forces of of Prague back into behind their walls. So the the outer defences are abandoned. But the defenders are doughty and able to fight off the repeated assaults by the Chaos Warband. But unfortunately, as we get into the winter of 2302, uh, the the walls are breached and the forces of Chaos get into the city. And not only do they physically enter the city, but the raw stuff of Chaos kind of breaches through reality. and. Uh, turns Prague into a living hell. Uh, And so you find a lot of the survivors are merged with uh, streets or houses. Uh, You get leering faces kind of appearing on walls and doors and disappearing. And it's all the the surviving, in quotes, uh, residents of Prague. Uh, And if you were to walk through it, you would hear, you would be kind of grabbed by limbs kind of shooting out of walls. It's still connected. Ugh. They don't launch at you like an arrow. Um, <laughs> but you're and they attempt to yeah boom, slap who slaps slap by they, a brick. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 
they try and pull you back into the wall to kind of join them in their horror. The, Come and join the horror, it's amazing. And no, mate. It's, <laughs> nah. it's a bit too bricky no, for it's me. really Bible. good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into walls, am I right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm more of an architrave uh, kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so there's a kind of constant low-grade kind of peeling horror-filled moan within the city. Um, Are they quite pathetic? They're like, oh, uh, trying to drag you in and like... It doesn't take much to resist them, to be honest. Just like, yeah. yeah, but it's, it's 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 done in a way like that's unsettling, like the laughter of small kids when it's not suitable, like in the middle <laughs> of the night. When... <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> and what was really weird, a load of humans <laughs> fell to their knees uh, and started talking like pigs. <laughs> Circle of life. Yeah. Akuna <laughs> Matata. <laughs> so while uh, Prague has been destroyed and now they're marching towards Kislev, the capital itself, the forces of chaos are really kind of uh, coming out from the shadows across the old world. You've got large chaos fleets uh, sailing down the coast of the old world, raiding and pillaging. You have, again, huge cults within uh, cities rising up trying to usurp power uh, beast men are just if you don't live behind a, a walled town or city you're absolutely screwed you'll just be washed away in a body or you'll be washed away in a tide of beast men bodies Yikes. and so while all this is happening in the old world the czar of kislev sends out messages to the electricants pleading for help uh, but Things are getting uh, weird. It's getting weird. <laughs> I got I got groped by a wall the other day. It was awful. <laughs> We're actually going on three dates. <laughs> Five more minutes of this, and I'm going to get mad. <laughs> 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 oh yes <laughs> good times but because the empire is splintered in in leadership there no one no one chooses to be the kind of hero of the hour none of the elect counts want to lead an army to uh, help their allies simply because the uh, while they're up. away yeah, while they're away, they're afraid another elect count is going to steal their province. Uh, so ah, you get a lot of kind of political nonsense. And even the priests, even like the high priest of Sigmar and the uh, high priest of Ulrich are um, arguing Wicked over out. yeah, over who's in command and who should be picked. Uh, and so it's uh, paralyzed by politics. Uh, and there are some and we'll cover them in the Empire episodes, who even feel that the cause is actually lost, so they abandon sanity and openly worship the forces of chaos uh, <laughs> in their own wow. homeland. Um, Holy shit. So this is like peak chaos time right now. This, this is, is like peak chaos. This is referred yeah. to as the Great War of Chaos. Um, and it, it, to everyone's kind of surprise, perhaps some chagrin and maybe even delight, one noble, kind of uh, a minor noble from the city of Nuln, called Magnus von Bildhofen, who is uh, also a priest of Sigmar, still believes that the forces of humanity and the, the gods of humanity can triumph as long as we don't abandon each other. Um, so he begins to rally his people, uh, and within short order, they're able to get rid of, completely wipe out uh, a cult of Zinch within Nuln called the Magi, who are in the process of summoning a great Chaos Legion into the city itself. And he manages to completely wipe them out after praying for a sign that you know he is he should do so because no one else is doing it he must do it and his prayers are answered with an enormous twin-tailed comet in the sky and yes. um, excellent from you know the sign from um hello hello sigmar so inspired by this omen this positive portent he cleanses the city completely and begins to go from uh, city to town town to city kind of arguing against a great kind of oratory for humanity to stick together and do what's needed. Um, and he eventually gets his way to the city of Middenheim, 
and by the time he's there, his legion is the largest that's ever been seen within the empire, even back to the days of Sigmar. It's an absolutely enormous crusading army. He seeks uh, an audience with the high priest of Ulrich to get the blessing of the god Ulrich, uh, and he is denounced as a charlatan by the, uh, <gasps> the high priest, by god uh, damn high it. priest Christoph. And in an odd parody of another race's uh, ritual, Magnus goes, well, fuck this for a game of noise, and walks through the sacred flame of Ulrich. <gasps> and he walks through and comes out the other side completely unharmed. The Christoph, the uh, high priest of Ulrich, the R. Ulrich, as the title is given, drops to his knees and announces um, Magnus as chosen of Ulrich. And in a very. This is after accusing him of being a charlatan. After accusing him of being a charlatan, because mate, he should fucking like prize our own eyes out with a spoon or something like <laughs> fucking <laughs> a spoon budgie, a spoon, yeah. a spoon budgie. Over. We, need to re- we need to remove some. I hands. just want you to really open your eyes wide and stand at this window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say car, but the tweet. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> But being quite politically astute, Magnus appoints Christoph as the head of his cavalry force. Uh, and okay. the White Knights, the, the Knights of the White Wolf, these great two handed, hammer wielding uh, Templar Knights of Ulrich, join the, the, the force. Um, Yay. So just as this kind of unification is uh, going under uh, the leadership of Magnus, a message is received from the Kislevites Tsar saying there's a huge crushing defeat uh, inflicted on the army, if you remember, at the at the banks of the Linsk. Um, and it's left their cities wide open. So Magnus, being quite kind of uh, tactically astute as well, inspired, uh, perhaps um, uh, uh, godly so. Is that the right word? Mm-hmm. It is now. Yeah. Sure. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. That's a word. Um, so he's, <laughs> why not? He's, he splits his army in two. Uh, so he has a, 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 a you know, 99% cavalry army and then the infantry army. So the cavalry army under the leadership of our Ulrich is dispatched to kind of relieve the city of Prague. This is all before Prague falls. Magnus then leads his enormous infantry army after them. Uh, and so, you know, it one is to relieve Prague, and the infantry army is then to hit to uh, Kislev. Oh, classic, absolute classic. Two part Jackson, mm-hmm. <laughs> a two army yeah. Jackson, you say? A uh, Prince of uh, Jackson. Yeah. 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 So as the infantry army is marching towards Kislev, they stop in Talapheim, in, in the the city in the crater, and Magnus meets up with his his ambassador to uh, Ulthuan, a chap called Peter Laszlo, and they had pleaded... Hey, Peter, with- I'm just passing through Talapheim, you know. It'd be silly not to meet up, right? We haven't seen it <laughs> yeah. what? A year or two? Yeah, yeah ever. <laughs> I saw, I can remember, you're, it, it, that's just remind me, I saw a, a party once, the most devastating put down. It was a guy who was talking about uh, how great his car was, and one of the other guys who was standing with just kind of told, said, hang on a second, did this, and went, yeah, yeah, I know, I don't give a fuck either. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, um, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> For listeners, I was doing the hand phone to the ear thing. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so uh, Magnus had basically petitioned the Phoenix King to send an army uh, to help with the forces of chaos because if the Empire falls, then the world is next, effectively. Um, and to this, uh, no pressure to, on- to honor the Great Alliance, uh, the High Elves sent three High Elves to wow. <laughs> augment his <laughs> army. But these were all Arc Mages; these were the oh, okay. most powerful mages, including Teclas. Uh, and if if we'll recall uh, for with high the elves, sinuses, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So you'll need to recall that uh, the battle for Fenuvial Plain had just finished. If you'll recall the high elf histories, oh, yeah. 
where uh, Malekith had tried to destroy the Great Vortex uh, as part of this kind of rising uh, horror of chaos within the world. The High Elves there really provided um, uh, power, magical power to Magnus's army because this is a, a time when this was before the Colleges of Magic. So uh, magicians were viewed you know, at best with suspicion, at worst they were hunted down and killed as dabblers of chaos energy. Uh, and so uh, Teclis and his two kind of allies, Fenrir and Irtel, were able to effectively create the Colleges of Magic or create the kind of way, the methods of harnessing a single wind of magic for humans that became... Did you just release a wind of magic, Chris? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was it? I could tell you old... leaned right over. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I thought he was just testing the durability of the seat. <laughs> <laughs> and so with this kind of uh, assurance and these uh, a new way of learning magic, Magnus declared an amnesty for anyone in the Empire who could wield magic. So they flocked to Talapheim and were either... They, they were given trials by Teclis uh, and his his helpers, and so they either passed the trials or they were killed. Uh, so it was a, a, a cake or death situation. Mr. Ben? Was that amnesty because if they were a magic user before they were deemed um, uh, evil or yes. chaos? Yeah. Right, okay, so basically yeah. it was like, if you can use it, you're okay now. You can... You can come over here. Yeah, and we'll, we'll yeah. You. If you're if you can use it and you can pass the trials of these high elves, then you're in. Yeah, sweet. Right. Okay. Or you would die. You would just burn up in yeah. kind of magical. They would kill you. Okay. If you feel they right. would kill you because you would fall to chaos eventually, or, or in the eyes of the high elves. So this suddenly uh, Magnus had an enormous kind of pool of magic users with which to fight off the kind of uh, the, the magical predations of chaos. While this was happening, the dwarves from Karazakarak were also, while they were also under siege by chaos, heard of the army marching towards Kislev and High King Alrikson was able to get to uh, Kislev first with a contingent uh, of dwarves. Uh, coming up through the um, the great underway of the dwarves, and uh, ultimately were able to uh, get into the city to help with the defenders before any of the imperial uh, forces arrived. With Prague kind of destroyed, Hasvar Kull turned his attention to Kislev, the capital of Kislev, and uh, again a huge horde of beastmen. Uh, drove into uh, the, the defenders of the city, and and much like uh, at Prague, they forced them back into behind the walls in the first kind of moments of the the battle. And it was only the dwarves who were on the battlements uh, and at the, at the great doors were able to stop the beastmen from getting through. You know, as the forces of chaos regrouped for the the second attack which was really a, a massed attack they were struck in the rear oh. if you excuse the phrase by the forces of magnus uh, and the devastating magical attacks of teclis and his now you know his hogwarts style collection of students cool nerds love it <laughs> so asvar called divided his forces between Attacking the city and counterattacking against the army. Two-part Jackson, yeah. yeah a yeah. two-part mm, Jackson. Mm, um, mm, the other two-part Jackson. The second two-part, yeah. The, yeah. So the force sent to counterattack against the Imperial Army was roundly uh, rebuffed uh, and defeated. Again, Teclis and his students playing a huge role in that. But the forces of chaos that were arrayed against the actual wall that were still sieging against uh, Kislev were too large to be completely destroyed by either force uh, and eventually were able to redeploy their ranks and push the Imperial Army back into a defensive stance. It was during this, during the the kind of uh, repositioning and uh, uh, taking up this defensive posture that one of the high elves was killed, Ertl. She was killed by a, a keeper of secrets. 
so another uh, high elf falls to the growing hunger of Slanesh. On the city walls, they could actually see the battle between the forces of uh, the Empire, led by Magnus, and Chaos, led by Asavar Kull. And seeing this kind of rebuff, 300 dwarves sallied out through the gates. Uh, if you can imagine hmm. yes, the, the, the great dwarven charges, as we've seen in The Lord of the Rings, well, especially in The Hobbit movies, uh, and tried to get to the Imperial forces to help them as well. Uh, but they were beaten back. The The sheer numbers uh, and body count of the Chaos Army was, was too much, and only half of the dwarves were able to get back into the city to continue helping the defence. Really then we're at a stalemate and a slow grinding stalemate. I'm saying slow grinding. This is all happening within the space of eight or nine hours. This is an enormous titanic battle happening. And it seems obvious that chaos has the kind of benefit of numbers and it's not looking great. But then, that was me stamping my hand down on the table. (laughs) The cavalry army that had uh, been sent to relieve Prague had been notified that all was lost, so had turned back to help relieve Kislev where they where they could. So you had an enormous cavalry force, like the riders of Rohan at the uh, in the Return of the King, perhaps thousands upon thousands of imperial knights of all statuses, led by the uh, R. Ulrich, so the the high priest of the god of wolves and winter. And they absolutely ploughed into the forces of chaos, uh, who've now found themselves being attacked from three sides. So led by the Ar Ulrich, the high priest of the god of wolves in winter, uh, this enormous cavalry force slams into the uh, the forces of chaos. I like awesome. to imagine that there's just thundering down towards what's referred to as the Hill of Heroes. So absolutely plowing into the the forces of chaos but but lots of spectral wolves running with them and a, a cool. blizzard following with them so i think yes. it would be very cinematic love that and once again just the pure hatred against the chaos forces is uh, suddenly possesses all the imperial forces pure annoyance Oof, pure annoyance bloody, ruddy chaos <laughs> and this 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 is either you know sigmar blessing them all or ulrich kind of imbuing them with this kind of ferocity or both who knows but uh, a double uh, blessing jackson i think of that uh, <laughs> <laughs> the other other double jackson yeah, yeah. <laughs> so upon seeing the forces of chaos starting to break uh, and discipline starting to break down magnus uh, orders his entire army into the fore once again. And so we see the forces of chaos ultimately caught between these three massive armies as the dwarves led by High King Alrickson sally out of Kislev once again and just absolutely decimate uh, anything that stands before them. Yay for the powers of good. Yay! It's at this stage where the kind of story turn gets a bit... Uh, kind of confusing Sticky. it's clear that the that chaos has lost the forces of chaos have lost all discipline and it's here that the tales of the kind of the withdrawal of the forces of chaos begin and i mean the kind of uh, ethereal mystic forces of chaos uh, as of our call feels that his uh, the gifts given to him feel like they're being withdrawn and any kind of demonic presence within the chaos army starts to evaporate as the mm. the force of chaos is pulled back towards the polar gate the fall of asavar kull really comes down to two kind of conflicting tales the first and perhaps the most oft repeated by the uh, people of the empire is that you know the champion of Sigmar met the champion of Chaos, and there was this huge duel where eventually Magnus uh, triumphed, knocking uh, Kull to the ground, who, as he was dying, removed his helmet and admitted defeat, saying that victory belonged to Magnus. But that's, of course, 
propaganda, <laughs> you know, your enemy declaring that you are the better person. Um, and it was and actually more like, he, Magnus, I am your father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. He pulled off. No, his no, helmet. no. He didn't say uh, he's not my dad. He said I'm better. Yeah. He's better than I'm better than. No, no relation. No relation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. I like the idea that Asavar Kull removed his helmet. It was a pig. <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> the whole time, it was a pig. It was just a loud pig. Yeah. yeah. The other kind of tale of his fall is that. The body of Asavarkal was found later by the uh, by the the armies of the empire, who had been stabbed in the neck from behind. Oh, interesting! And the, that'll do the, it. That'll do it. And so it was seen <laughs> as a punishment uh, by a uh, a warlord known as Engra Deathsword, great name, who killed Asavarkal for failing to live up to. Uh, right, the ideals yeah. of the ever chosen in this kind of Darwinian marauder style lifestyle yeah, execution, just exactly bang. right. You're done, you're Dickinson. So ultimately, uh, the Kislevite and dwarf troops broke through the the kind of collapsing army of chaos and were able to join up with Magnus, uh, and ultimately, same was true of the cavalry force led by. Christoph, and the horde of chaos was uh, literally ground into bloody paste uh, at the gates of Kislev. Both High King Auriksen and the general of Kislev, Vasilevich, uh, recognized Magnus as the uh, kind of the reason that chaos was uh, defeated, and uh, ultimately. We see that the forces of chaos fall back. The armies go on to liberate the city of Eringrad. Prague itself has to be completely razed to the ground and rebuilt. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't stop the occasional face or arm <laughs> leering out of mm. uh, the the rebuilt structures. Just it's like, still a, a benighted place. Off. Yeah, like, oh, don't mind <laughs> the tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and of note, in terms of kind of closing out this section of the uh, of the chaos histories, we'll make two points. The first is uh, after the uh, liberation of Kislev, and on the way back to the empire, or as they were moving through the empire, Magnus kind of detoured his army and completely destroyed the city of Mordheim. It no longer exists. There's not even ruins. It's like an enormous, wow. large, paved area. Um, Amazing. It's just apartments now. <laughs> it's just it's a car park. <laughs> just really, it's, it's really a, poorly made apartments. <laughs> yeah, mum. Two, three beds. Yeah. Uh, and the ultimate fate of uh, Asavar Cole's body was it it was unable to be destroyed because it still while the gifts had been withdrawn it still had this kind of innate magical invulnerability thanks to the forces of chaos and the high elves couldn't get through to it to be able to destroy the body it was buried on a small island in the sea of claws that sea to the north that separates the north of the empire uh, and norska uh, and ultimately uh, much like the the shrine of Cain, a shrine was built around the tomb of Asvarkal, uh, and its ownership changes hands between the Empire and the uh, forces of chaos. Oh, interesting. Although, in terms of his spirit, while the gifts had been removed and he had uh, failed, the legends of the Norskans say that he actually lives still in the realm of chaos, uh, as a demon prince of corn, because of the amount of death he was able to uh, contribute to corn's kingdom, he lives in a great tower uh, containing the skulls of every single enemy he's ever slain or had caused to be slain. That closes the Great War of Chaos. Wow. 
I I had to hold myself back from screaming "fuck yeah" several times during that <laughs> battle. That was that was. Awful. <laughs> I love it when all the good forces start rallying. I'm like, oh, here we go. It's gonna be a fucking. <laughs> it's gonna be a panger. It's gonna be a fight. I can't wait. <laughs> it's kind of hard to picture these things without picturing scenes from Lord of the Rings, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, yeah. it really is. There's nothing. Nothing's kind of come close in. Uh, in kind of depicting that epicness in the what's it the kingdom of heaven the movie is one of my favorite movies oh, of yeah, all time yeah, yeah. the siege of jerusalem i'd say that's a, that's a pretty that's a big good end. that's a big end. that's a big end. if you replace all the sand with ice that's yeah. it yeah that's what well I was snow because ice would just be comical <laughs> and then the forces the cavalry forces skidded into the enemy meow I believe the past tense is scud. Scud. <laughs> Scudad. <laughs> and that's why they called it a scud missile. Yeah, there you come. Yeah. Well, that anyway, was epic. That was epic. a jolly old romp, wasn't it? Really? It was, indeed. So that was the 12th ever chosen. I'm guessing that the 13th we will cover later, and that's the, the current ever yes. chosen. Is that right? Okay. Barry ever chosen. And again, one of the few characters from uh, Warhammer Fantasy that translated wholesale into Age of Sigmar. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh. Fancy that, Ben. What do you know? What do you know, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> bully. That was a bloody bully good story, then. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, that's that, then. Finn. <laughs> <laughs> Now you've got to go and live your humdrum lives. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, well, we got to wrap up. Yeah, Mom. All right, that's all from us. Thank you so much for listening. Details and imagery for the topics we've discussed in this podcast can be found on our website at layingdownthelore.com. We also have all our previous episodes on there, release schedules and merchandise, which we mentioned earlier. That is awesome and you should buy. See, do you like that sales pitch there, Kral? Was that, was that salesy enough? Mate, fucking I'm on with fire. conviction. That I'm on was fire. Like... I'm on fire. Anyone else got a capitalism boner? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Again, if you're keen to support this podcast, just click on the supporters link in the description and give us all of your chaos bucks. We'll be back again soon displaying just how little Chris and I know about epic chaos battles. Until then, goodbye. Warm hammers. No, sorry, warm hamsters to you all. For, for everybody. No, wait, say that thing again, then. No, check it. <laughs> Bully! <laughs>